Hi, my name is Yash and in this video, I will communicate with you about how you can communicate with others at home and at work better, particularly if you are a software engineer in your one, two or three of your career. We cover three topics. One, why is communication important for your career growth? Two, how can you communicate better? And three, a checklist that you can use right after this video. Why is this video going to be slightly different? Because what we'll try to do is take a logical explanation that sticks with you, regardless of the many frameworks that exist, that is underlying the frameworks. And two, we'll take examples that hopefully you can relate to. Let's dive into it. Let's talk about why communication is so important for your career growth. We'll talk about this with a simple tabular example to compare an SD1, maybe in year one or two of their career, with a CTO or an engineering manager, uh, anywhere between the fifth to 10th year mark of their career. And we'll use three parameters to give you a sense of exactly why people keep saying communication is important and you should work on it now rather than later. But hold on a second. Communication is important is fairly obvious to everyone. It's like saying exercise is important, right? Doesn't everyone agree? Yes. Uh, can everyone explain it in a way that they believe it? Maybe. Does everyone do exercise or does everyone work on their communication? Maybe not. Well, that's exactly why we're going to talk about the three parameters. So let's talk about the CTO versus the SD1 along three parameters. The first is the amount of time spent. As an SD1, you're probably spending five to 10 hours out of a 50 hour week on communicating. But as an, as an engineer, manager, or as a CTO, you're probably spending 20 to even 30 hours out of a 50 hour week on just communicating in various forms, written, uh, spoken and written can also be on email, on Slack, uh, on WhatsApp. It can be requirement documents, technical specifications and so on and so forth. So the amount of time spent can go up from in the five to 10 hour range, maybe from 10 hours to 25 hours. That's a 2.5 X job. And that's huge. That defines half your job now as an engineering manager. So number one parameter, time spent massively changes as you grow in your career. Number two parameter, the rupee value could be the dollar value as well. But what's important to internalize here is that an SD1 may be working on uh, the typography or the front end flow for page that perhaps has a few thousand rupees of implication of risk associated with it if it goes wrong. But a CTO carries the risk of entire products themselves and groups of products. For example, if there's a huge referral product for the B2B partners and that goes wrong or is communicated wrong, then that has a multi crore rupee risk so the amount of rupee risk that multiplies exponentially time multiplies uh, in terms of you know 2.5 3x 4x from an sd1 to a cto but the amount of rupee risk that multiplies exponentially that's the second parameter for why communication is important the third parameter and this is something that we often underestimate at least i have seen that is the audience parameter and this is the dimensions and types of audience as an sd1 you're probably limited to 90% of your time spent with an internal audience that is a combination of three stakeholders, perhaps your peers, uh, your manager, uh, and then maybe uh, the HR. Uh, other than that, there is not much work communication going on with stakeholders. But as a CTO, communication is with internal audiences as well as external audiences. Within internal audiences, there are functions to communicate with. There is a business team, there is a product team, uh, there is a marketing team that could also be communication with the sales team. There could be communication with the HR and the recruitment team about organizing the team and hiring more people. There could be communication with the founders. There could be communication with the CEO. There are just many dimensions of internal communication and each stakeholder internally will receive the message and interpret the message differently. So the CTO will have to modify his or her style to meet the needs of getting the message across to the internal stakeholders. So that's one dimension that increases significantly. The other dimension for the CTO is the external dimension. He or she may have to actually talk to the board of the company or a bunch of users or write a blog on LinkedIn about the company. And so the degree of external uh, interactions and audiences changes and magnifies. So does the degree and number of internal audiences. To summarize, the third variable is audience. As an SD1, your audience is limited, but as a CTO, your audience is exponential, internal and external. So you need to be able to modify your style, which is why those three variables show that as an engineer in your early career, the time spent is low, the rupee value is low, the audience is also limited. 
But as a CTO, the time spent is massive. From 10 hours, you go to 25 hours. The rupee value goes from a few thousand rupees to crores of rupees. And the audiences go from three or four stakeholders to maybe 15 or 20 stakeholders. And so communication becomes really important, which is why if you look at the skill of communication and how most leaders see it, you plot on the x-axis years of experience, on the y-axis communication skill, and most believe that the graph should always flow upward. What changes, however, is the nuance of the gradient. If you're working in a context which is slightly more multicultural, like you're working in a B2B SaaS tech startup uh, with clients in the US, then the gradient may be sharper. Because as a manager, you may already have to be very, very clear and crisp in your communication. Whereas if you're working in a more local context, the gradient may be flatter. Regardless, the gradient is always upward. And because time, rupee value and audiences magnify as you grow in your career, communication is really important. And that's something you should internalize right now. So maybe now you can explain why exercise is important. So how can you communicate better? Maybe you should be more polite. Maybe you should use a flowery language. Maybe you should speak really fast. Maybe you should work on your pitch, tone, clarity, pace, amplitude, diction. Maybe you should just follow that amazing picture on, on Google search, which was some Harvard-esque method of communicating better. All of that may be right and all of that may be wrong. What I'm going to tell you is the underlying logic, which if you understand and use, no matter what framework you use, you'll be fine. And that logic is the following. Perfect communication is equal to message intended is equal to message sent, is equal to message delivered with the least number of words or energy possible. Let me repeat. Message intended is equal to message sent, is equal to message delivered. How often is this equation really true? Most times you'll notice that you had some other intention in mind. The message came out in a certain way and the message was interpreted and received in a certain way. The biggest problem with communication is the loss of meaning at every stage from thought to delivery the, the recipient taking it in. And that loss of meaning is exactly like in any physics construct, you have loss of energy from different stages. So if you solve to keep that chain tight and you'll never get to 100%, maybe you'll get to 70, 80, 90%, you'll be fine with whichever framework you use. So that's the golden equation to remember. Now, how specifically can you understand this and use it already today? Let's take an example, a not so good example, a good example. Uh, if you're an SD1 working on a certain product feature and that's delayed, uh, then the not so good example is you send the message uh, to your product manager saying, hey, listen, this is delayed. It'll take two more days. And then the product manager asks you why. And then you explain, oh, listen, the API integration didn't happen so smoothly. Uh, and then the product manager asks you, hey, have you looked at other techniques or other kinds of tools to integrate with? And then you'll say, hey, we looked at this, uh, but then it's still not very, very easy. And uh, you know, we, we think this is still the best one, so it'll take two more days. And then it'll be like, okay, are there other dependent tasks that I should inform others about uh, that depend on your completion of this. They'll be like, hi, yeah, 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 let's, let's inform this other team about, you know, the design piece they're building and that will have to delay a little bit. And then be like, okay. So you went through four loops of communication to explain why there would be a certain delay. Now that is, gets the job done, but it's too many loops and it's not very comfortable as an experience for you or the product manager. On the other hand, a good example is the following. You can already anticipate and solve for what the message received should be. So for example, if the message received should be uh, the product manager understanding why there's a delay, by how long there'll be a delay, two days, uh, who else is affected by the delay, how he can therefore plan better, and what are the things you are already doing to make sure there are no further delays, then we're fine. So the good example is when you say, hey, listen, there's a two day delay because the API integration is not going well. We've looked at many other API options. This is the best one. Uh, as a result of this, there may be the design team whose work can be today more affected. And so we should inform them right now. Alternatively, to make sure that there is no further delay, we have a backup as well in case this one doesn't work and two engineers are working in parallel so that no matter what happens by two days, things go live. If you have any inputs, please let us know. Now, this is the message required. And if you solve for this, then you've already solved the message intended and the message sent in a way that it should be received. And there is no loop here. It's just one clean loop, maximum two, if he asks you a follow up question. So this is an example of how you can use the golden equation to communicate better. Uh, I will also share one more, uh, what I have discovered as a, as a hack. Uh, usually, if you're using verbal communication, you can use a combination of variables such as pitch, tone, pace, clarity, amplitude. Now, this is almost a set of tools to use. Your pitch is how uh, you know high or how low you go. Your pace is how fast you go or how slow you go. Your tone can be uh, 
different. It can be serious. It can be very, very funny. Uh, clarity is about how well you're pronouncing the word so that it's clearly audible. Uh, and amplitude is, of course, how loud you are or how soft you are. And so if you play with these, because you have a default setting, it's like you're a thermometer or a, or a tool. Each of us is and has a default setting. If you play with the verbals, then you're sometimes the message sent gets received better. And that, that loss of meaning is reduced. So let me summarize. How can you communicate better? Uh, we used a not so good example of multiple loops of communication and lack of clarity. Uh, and we used a single loop example of a good communication with the product manager where everything was said in one go uh, in a very clear way. Uh, and this is an example of how, therefore, if you think about the three parts of the golden equation, you will communicate better no matter what tool or framework you use. Of course, the voice variables are an add-on. Feel free to use pitch, tone, clarity, pace, amplitude. Play with them, find your own style, and eventually you'll see that the more you intend is what exactly is sent is what exactly is received. And over time, you'll get better and better. Let's recap. So far, we've talked about two topics out of the three. Why is communication important? We've talked about three parameters. How as you grow in your career, the amount of time you're communicating, the ruby value associated with your communication, as well as the amount and type of audiences that you have to communicate with. All of that grows. And therefore, communication becomes more and more important as you grow. Number two, we've talked about how you can communicate better. Uh, we've touched upon the golden equation after which you can use any framework. And that equation is the message intended is equal to the message sent is equal to the message delivered. Uh, and number three, we'll now cover in the last 30 seconds, a checklist that you can use to communicate better starting right after this video. What is that checklist? Five simple things. Remember the audience, the message you intend for them to receive, the medium you want to send it in, text, call, Make sure you spell check before you send it. And finally, make sure that you follow up after it has been received so that you make sure that they have understood what you wanted them to understand. If you do these five things and you do it consistently over time, your communication will start showing improvement day by day, year by year, and you'll see those gains uh, that will then show up in ways where people start seeing you differently and in a better light. This video was just the tip of the iceberg in communication and soft skills content. If there are more topics you want us to cover or specific questions you have, please comment below. We'll definitely respond uh, in our quest to make you the best engineer that you can be.